Yeah. Hi. Yeah. How are you? Everybody good? Yay. My name is Pam Lefkowitz. I own Core. Hi. I own Core Computing Technologies. I'm. It's a uh, an IT consulting and managed service provider in the Chicago area. I've been doing this work for eh, 20-ish years. Um, maybe it's time for a career change. I don't know, but I thought we should talk about it. You can write me at pamcorecomputing.com. You can tweet me at, at alwaysdns. Um, I suppose you can Slack me now at alwaysdns, too. Uh, today, we're going to talk about <clears throat> careers. We're going to talk about from you know the time first you become, you're an intern, maybe. Maybe you're not. Maybe you are. Then you become an expert. Somewhere you've moved along this little continuum, right? We grow, we change, and then ultimately, we hope that we retire willingly yeah. of our own volition, retire, and not that we are retired. Um, I lost my clicker. Oh, there we go. Got it. Sorry. Um, we'll talk about the reasons to stay, the reasons to leave. We'll talk about strategies for being successful no matter which you choose or which you get stuck with. Um, we'll talk about the symbiosis between your work life and your personal life. And for some of us, there's very little difference between the two. So let's go. <clears throat> How do you know when it's time to go? You truly, truly, truly dread Monday mornings. <laughs> Just really hate the thought of it. This is a big sign. If you find yourself calling in sick or Googling ways to play hooky, this might be a sign that you're ready to leave your job. <laughs> you find that your job is not letting you reach what you know is your true potential. We all say that because sometimes we think we're better than we are. So there's a lot of soul searching that goes into this statement. <coughs> Maybe you have a monster boss, right? We've all had one of those. Well, most of us have had. I know I've had monster bosses. And sometimes you want to leave just because. So I'm going to ask you guys to do something here. And because I know some people are working together or work in the same companies, we don't want anybody to know what anybody else is doing. So everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. All right. Now with your eyes closed, who's looking for a new job? Put your hands down. Who is contemplating maybe they might want to change careers? Put your hands down. Keep them closed. Who's already started looking for a new job? Put your hands down. Okay, open them. Open your eyes. All right, so that was really interesting. About 50% of you are thinking about a career change. About 50% of you are, are looking, are, are wanting and starting to look for a new job. Um, and about a quarter of you are actually currently looking for a new job. <clears throat> So I suspect people who didn't answer any of those questions are either here because they really like me, <laughs> or because they want cookies, or because, or, or just because, or because they're really thinking about it, but they're not willing to admit it and didn't trust that the person sitting next to them really had their eyes closed. <laughs> any of that's true, but it, but it is interesting. So <laughs> we're all IT people, right? We need to do this methodically. We need to define the problem, right? Because we can't solve a problem unless we know what the problem is. So we need to know, is it the job or the task itself? Is it the people in the department that we work with? If that person is just you, that's a whole other issue. Is it the corporate culture? So. Let's, let's, um, let's talk just a little bit about corporate culture. Does everybody know what corporate culture is? Or just heard the word, not so sure? 
we'll, we'll do this. There is um, the founder and president, the founder, president, and CIO of Bridgewater Associates. His name is Ray Dalio. Um, wrote an amazing piece, and I, I actually printed out half of it. Not intending to print out the whole thing, but there was some really cool stuff. It is worth reading. It is his, um, what does he call it? My Management Principles is what he calls it. And his name is spelled Ray Dalio, D-A-L-I-O. This is a very worthwhile piece of soul searching. It's his manifesto. And the guy's got to have something. It's Bridgewater. So one of the things that, um, that he does when he talks about corporate culture, <clears throat> is anybody here an employer? <laughs> One, two, okay. So, so, so a couple of us, or a hiring person, you know, a person who's in charge of hiring for their department. Okay, so there are a few of us. And, and what, I'll just read a couple of these to you. Um, because this is what employers, I know I'm one of them, are looking for. Hire right because the penalties of hiring wrong are huge. So when you're out there and you're looking for the next task, the next great thing, you want to make sure that you are that right person. And you want to make sure the company you're going to or the department you're going to is the right department as well. So all those pieces need to fit together, right? Think through what values, abilities, and skills you are looking for from a hiring manager perspective. <clears throat> Weigh the values and abilities more heavily than skills in deciding whom to hire. So, so I'll read that one again because that one I love. Weigh values and abilities more heavily than skills in deciding whom to hire. Most of us in a hiring position, in an employer position, really don't care what your skills are. We do. I want to know that the person I hire has math skills. But it's way more important to me that the person I hire can talk to people. I can train tech if you have a brain. I can't train you to talk to somebody. Um, remember that people tend to pick people like themselves. So pick interviewers who can identify what you're looking for. So. So we'll talk about that actually coming up in, in when we talk about the interview process. Um, look, hiring managers are going to look for people who have lots of great questions. Remember, keep that in mind. We'll talk about that again too. Um, look for people who sparkle, not just another one of those. So these are the kinds of things that you want, and you'll notice they're not they're not tech things. Well, he wasn't hiring tech; he was hiring financial. But they're not tech things. They are, they are people skills. Um, he has, in the corporate culture part, this is, this, I have a lot of respect for a man who can say, never say anything about a person you wouldn't say about a person you wouldn't say to them directly and don't try people without accusing them to their face. That's his corporate culture. And I have heard tell that if folks disobey that, they are fired immediately if they're caught talking behind somebody's back. It's a big deal. If, if you live in a corporate culture where, where people snipe and talk and try each other, that's probably a toxic environment. That's probably a great reason to be looking for another corporate culture. And that, so that's a question that when you start looking for your next job, you want to talk to the managers. You want to find out what their culture is like. Hi. Uh, sorry, maybe this is out of the scope of the thing. Are you going to talk at all about other ways to change the corporate culture? I mean, we will talk about this a little bit. He wanted to know if there's ways to change corporate culture, and it depends on how big corporate is. Yeah. But yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, okay. So, so go, going on with with the finding out why the defining the problem. Is it the location? Are you just really tired of driving an hour and a half to work each day and back home? It's a perfectly valid reason. Are you ready for a, an absolute environmental move? I live in Chicago. I'm really sick and tired of the cold. I really want to go somewhere warm. Completely valid reason to go. Or are you simply suffering burnout? 
that's also, that's a big, big deal. Burnout's <laughs> tough. So let's talk about how to combat burnout. Anybody here feeling burned out? Oh, come on. Dang. People lied. There's more of you. Look, okay, I know I am. I know I am. So how do we combat it? We move. Not we move to another location. We get our butts out of our chairs and we move our bodies. We learn to exercise. We learn to breathe. We learn to stretch. We get a walking desk or a standing desk, but we move, we raise our heart rates. Sitting is the worst thing you can do for your heart. When your heart's sad, the rest of your body is sad. We sleep. The days of the 90s when I'll sleep when I'm dead was the big thing is over, people, over. All the, CE, all, the, all the successful CEOs of companies, the, 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 the CEOs of Facebook and Google and Amazon and, and Microsoft, every one of them is now refuting that, that attitude of sleep four hours a night, I'll be okay. You need eight hours. Your body needs eight hours. And if you are burning out, you need to sleep. Your body has to refresh itself. I know this all sounds really silly and real <laughs> crystal, you know, energy things, but, but this is real. This is real. You will feel so much better if you get a full night. Disconnect. Okay, did do him a lot good. But disconnect. Do something different. Get a hobby. Lose the IT. I think the best thing I did this past year, I did two best things, but the, the best thing I did this year was I went to a resort in March that had a no technology um, credo on their, on their, when you went in, there was no technology. You were not getting cell phone signal, period. I spent three days there, no cell phone. Disconnected. It took me a day and a half till I started feeling not <sighs> and I stopped reaching for my phone. Of course, by then it was almost time to go. But, but disconnect. Put it away. Do something else. Breathe real air. Get our pasty butts out of the basement out of the office and get outside and breathe real oxygen. Might be a little polluted, but it's better than what we're getting in the office. Get outside and breathe real air. Pick your battles. This is hard for some of us, hypothetically us, to pick our battles because we're IT and we know certain things, but because we are experts in our field doesn't mean we're experts in all fields. I know, revolutionary, mm -hmm. but true. We need to pick our battles. We need to not fight every, we, we don't have to win every battle to win the war. And fighting every battle is exhausting. It is tiring and it's one of the reasons we burn out. <laughs> Try acquiring an attitude of gratitude. Um, it's a cheesy kind of statement, I know, all the rhymey things. But if you're grateful, you find a lot less reason to be tense. I am, my, my brother, okay, so we'll do the birthday thing because it's my birthday, and it's a big birthday, I'm 55. Happy birthday. Thank you. But two weeks ago was my brother's birthday, and I was working on this ginormous project, which was really stressful, and, I, and it wasn't at home, so I was out of town, just locked away for 15 to 17 hours a day, putting in all this new tech. Exactly what I'm telling us not to do, but it was a two-week thing, so it's okay. And I forgot his birthday, and so I wrote him 
the next day and I apologize. And he said, so does that mean when it comes to your birthday next week, I will forget? I can forget yours? And I said, no, 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 no. Don't forget mine because everyone is important. I am grateful for every one of them. I'm getting older. I'm forgetting. I ache a little. You know, it's that kind of thing. But everyone is a reason to be grateful. It's, it's another one. It's another one I knocked out. I won, right? I get to do this again. I get to come here and meet all these people and bring you cookies. I, everything, it, gratitude combats burnout for me probably more than almost anything else. And forgiveness. That boss who really ticked you off, find it in your heart to forgive them. We don't have to like what they do, but if we can forgive them, we can be the better person. And being the better person is what it's all about, right? We don't win when we have acquired all the things. We win when we've become a good person. We win when we have calm in our lives. And when we are not forgiving, we don't have calm in our lives. And when we don't have calm, we tend to suffer burnout symptoms <coughs> worse. So let's look at this in a methodical fashion, how we're going to get to the next, the next great thing. Um, we'll look at it as if we're going to be planning a network upgrade, so methodically. <coughs> If you're not looking at your network upgrades methodically, you should be doing a different session later in the week. <laughs> I think Tom's doing it. The first thing we do is discovery and analysis. Do you like what you do? Do you like being a Mac admin? Or a sys admin or a network admin, whatever admin -y thing you're doing. What parts of what you're doing do you like? I like working with people, I like doing the hardware repairs, I like whatever, whatever the parts of your job is or are that you like doing, list them out. What parts don't you like doing? And I don't like dealing with bosses, doesn't count because you're going to have that anywhere. That's the piece that you're going to have to change you to work with. So what don't you like about your job? What don't you want to do again? Because don't take the next job that, whose task is what you don't like doing. That's just silliness. Do I want to do the same thing? Do I really like everything I'm doing, but I want to do it in a different place? Do you want to stay in the same genre? So I want to stay in IT, but in a different role. But now I really want to become a manager. <coughs> <laughs> or I want to be in IT, but I want to be a network admin. Or I want to be in IT, but I want to do security. Ha <laughs> ha. We had that great security session yesterday, so my head is like spinning with ideas. Um, do you want a big change? I do not want to do IT anymore. I'm done. That, that's a big change. You have to assess if you can afford to be out of work. That, that's a big deal. Can do you need to look for a job while you are still employed? And we can talk about the pros and cons of that. Or can you afford to be out of work to look for this next job? Those are, those are key questions you need to ask yourself. Once you've, <laughs> excuse me, once you have discerned what you're looking for, what kinds of environments you're looking for, why you're looking, then you can go ahead and pick what the next type of gig is that you want to do. So one of, if, you're, if you're done with tech, but you don't know what you want to do next, I actually didn't put this link down. Um, the, the website, www.mynextmove.org, is a pretty slick site. It, um, do you guys remember taking those, like the Crofts test in your junior year of high school? I actually can remember high school still. So. It's the one that told you what kind of things you'd be really good at when you grow up, if you grow up. Um, that's sort of what my next move does. 
uh, and it, it's pr it's pretty slick. You might be surprised. Maybe you're maybe you're in the completely wrong field altogether. I don't know. I don't know. But it's worth taking a look at that one if you're questioning where you want to go. You might try getting a life coach. Um, I have not used them, but I have seen successful life coaching experiences from friends of mine. I do have a cousin who's a life coach, and she she tells tremendous stories about people whose lives really have changed by coaching. Maybe, maybe you need to fulfill a lifelong dream and get a college degree to reach that goal of the job that you want. So, so if what you want to be is a manager, maybe you need to go back to school and take some classes on, on managerial expertise. I, I don't know. If you want to, if you want to switch your career and you want to go from IT admin to coding, maybe you need to go and get that comp sci degree. I don't know. Soul searching. Um, if you want to stay in tech but move upwards in, in that food chain, what do you need to do to do that? How are you going to gain those skills? Do you go to school? Do you join networking organizations? And I don't mean, I don't mean Ethernet networking organizations. I mean people networking organizations. Um, Toastmasters. Have, have you guys heard of Toastmasters? Is anybody, is that just us old folks who know about Toastmasters? By old, I mean anybody over 30. Um, Toastmasters is a great place to go and learn to public speak. Learn to speak in front of crowds. Learn to talk to people. Learn to relate. Learn to make eye contact. Learn all these things that have, that have people things. So, and, and as far as I know, there are Toastmasters everywhere. So, great group. I don't exactly know how you get into them, but you guys have Google. Um, and what if you want to go out on your own? Is anybody thinking of doing that? It, whose employer is not in the room? <laughs> well, you know, I, I want to keep everybody safe. So, uh, you're, yeah, so, so now you've got a whole bunch of stuff that you have to look at is, how do I go out on my own? Do I just quit my job and sit in my office and hang out the shingle and go, wee? It doesn't work that way. There's a lot to it. Make a list of the barriers to that, that you're going to have to achieve your next dream. And I say your next dream because as, as we go on in life, our dreams change, they morph, they become other, they, they, be, they regain new ones, things we haven't discovered yet suddenly pop into our lives and we go, oh my, that would be great. Make a list of the, barri of the barriers to achieving your next goal. And then make the list of how you're going to break those barriers. Write this down. I'm a fan of paper. I make lists on paper. They feel more real to me. Maybe take a weekend seminar about something you're interested in. Um, you know, I, I can think of a million things, but uh, you know, maybe maybe you've gotten into yoga. Take a weekend seminar. Go on a yoga trip. Learn to be a, learn to be a yogi. It can happen. It's something different. So now we have all these tools, and we know we have we have our research down. So the next phase is the job seeking. <clears throat> Okay, I'll leave that for a little bit. See, I brought paper, people, because paper works. Okay, this next slide is going to be a stretch for some people. Okay, I won't say who. It'll be in my head. Because it's going to deal with emotions, and it's going to deal with personalities. Becoming a more desirable applicant. In his book, Emotional Intelligence, Daniel, Daniel Goleman, G-O-L-E-M-A-N, talks about the five steps of emotional intelligence. Self-awareness, knowing what you're capable of, knowing your own feelings. This is really, really, really critical. We have to know what's inside here if we're going to know who we are. Self-management, 
keeping your emotions in check, acting like a proper adult, not stomping our feet and throwing our hands in the air and telling everybody they're stupid. Keep that stuff in check. Who, somebody talked about that yesterday. I can't remember who. Um, oh, Jennifer, you talked about sort of this stuff when you talked about users, working with users. There, I said, don't do it. <laughs> we <laughs> keep keep your stuff in check manage yourself that's the only person you can manage anyhow so you may as well manage yourself so that everybody else sees you in a better light motivation what's your motivation what is your personal drive for joy for curiosity um, what's your your personal motivation for being productive for me, when I'm feeling like I'm stuck, I clean up my office. I don't know why it works for me, but it works for me. Or I cast down another knitting project, and which is why I have five going at any given time. But I, I, I do something that, that will motivate me to do the next right thing for Pam. Um, one, two, three, four. The fourth one is empathy. This one is hard. Walk a mile in someone else's shoes. So we go to the users. We go, we go to a user's desk, and they tell us their problem, and we stop them and fix it before they're done telling us their problem. <laughs> they're not telling us their problem necessarily for us to fix it. They're telling us their problem to be heard. They want their whole problem to be heard. You go to the doctor and you say, I've been sneezing, and he stops you and gives you a pill. That's not what you're there for. You want to tell him the whole story. I'm sneezing, I'm coughing, my eyes are watering, and it didn't start until I went to Pennsylvania. The whole story. Have empathy. Hear where they're coming from. They're not as adept at this Mac admin stuff as we are, mostly. So we really want you to walk a mile in their shoes, see it from their perspective. They will respect you so much more, you'll feel better about yourself. Social skills, finding common ground, being persuasive, managing, not manipulating, managing other people. We want to learn to talk to people, to, to other people than we normally talk to. Some of us who work alone don't talk to anybody. So this conference and conferences like this are great opportunities to practice those social skills. Don't sit alone. Don't sit with the same people all the time. Talk to new people. Make a point of talking to a new person every hour or between each session, which is like every hour. <laughs> sit with different people at lunch find out about them get out of yourself and ask about them and then listen listen this is all the emotional intelligence stuff um, <laughs> talk to five people Here, here's a task you could, here's a task to do talk to five people who know you really well doesn't have to be people in, in the business world, family, friend, five people who know you really well for 20 minutes each. Ask them what about you has the biggest impact on them, good or bad, good or bad, and then shut up and let them talk. What about you has the most Has the biggest impact on them. You want to be able to, to write a great resume? Do this and leave your ego out of it. You don't care what they say. Your feelings are not going to be hurt. This is a discovery for you. Thicken up that skin. Get, get yourself a, uh, a mentor or a great friend or a life coach or, so, or a guide or whatever you want to call this person. Someone who, can tell, who, you, who you tell what you're going to be doing and what course you plan to take and this person should be able to say, you are going off course. Come on back. Get help. There are no egos in getting ourselves, in getting ourselves improved. Ask for help. 
Become a more interesting person. Exercise, read a book. How many people have read a book in the last month? That is not tech. Good job. Not everybody, though. Read a book. Read a book that is not job related. Read something smutty. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Just read. Reading improves everything. It makes you smarter. It keeps you sharp. It lets you write better. If you don't read, you can't write. Read a book. Have a hobby that is not job related. I knit. I knit like a madman, but I knit. Pick something that's completely, it, 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 honestly, here's the secret. It's not really different than the engineering that I do on a daily basis. It's still engineering, it's math. So knitting is not, knitting is for guys too. Um, Something, but pick something that is that is really to pick a collect coins. It doesn't matter what you do. Become more interesting. Do something different. Get younger. So most folks in here are over thirty. Most folks. For those of you under twenty-five, you're not getting any younger. <laughs> but for those of us who who are more experienced. I won't say mature, because that's not always the case. <laughs> get younger. Here's how you get younger. Besides exercising, besides eating right, those are all the things your doctor will tell you. Watch an episode of Archer or Family Guy. I kid you not. Be able to talk this tough. You have to be able to relate to the people who are going to be hiring you who are likely younger than you. Um, understand who the Kardashians are. <laughs> I, don't want to. I know, I don't want to either, but we kind of got to know. Learn sports. Learn sports ball. <laughs> I don't like soccer, but I can talk about soccer. Love baseball. I'm a baseball girl. Cubs. Cubs. Oh. It's pathetic, but I'm a Cubs fan. It's okay. Next year. Now, this year, maybe. If not, then next year. Um, get a proper haircut. I am not kidding when I say this. Do not wear an old person haircut. Go to a barber, stylist, whatever. Get a proper haircut. Get a current cut. Mine's growing out, so that's how it goes. Where are we going to look for a job? First, unless it's unbearable, don't quit your job to look for a job. Monster.com is still keen on the theory that it's much easier to find a job while you are employed. They call it, I think they call it passive employment, <laughs> something like that. So if you can stay employed, stay employed while you're looking. If you can't, and there are reasons you can't, then you can't. So where are you going to look for these jobs? <laughs> Craigslist is certainly one place. Um, I hired one of my employees from Craigslist. I probably won't do it again. <laughs> he didn't last but a couple of months. Happens. Indeed. This thing is fairly new. This is a very, very, very cool way to look for a job. They do, as an employer, it's amazing. I got, within two days, I think I got 100 resumes. Now, a lot of them were, you know, I don't want to work at McDonald's anymore, high school dropout type people, but I found some really amazing candidates off of, off of Indeed. There are, there are some very good jobs. People are using it. I don't know when it came about, but it seems to be kind of popular now. LinkedIn. This is one I wish I knew more about how to make this work. Um, I don't, but you guys are all super smart people, so you'll Google it and figure it out. 94% of over 1,800 HR professionals interviewed credit LinkedIn as the essential source for recruiting. That came out of Art Magazine. I don't know which month, a month or so ago, a couple of months. All right, so 
Out of 1,800 HR professionals interviewed, 94% found their people on LinkedIn. Update your LinkedIn profile. If you don't have one, get one. Get found. Headhunters. I don't know. I don't. I don't get headhunters. Um, and I think because this article told me all the things that I inherently knew, I I won't read it to you. Copy this down. Take a picture of it. Whatever. You'll get the slides afterwards. But read this article before you go signing up with headhunters. It's very interesting. Um, it's not the most successful way, in my opinion, to find a job. This is the most successful way, I believe, to find a job. Now, here's, here's, um, here's an interesting thing about this. What this means is that if you're here and you're looking for a job, you are networking. <clears throat> if you are networking with me and you are not putting your best foot forward, I am not hiring you. So we have to be on our best behavior all the time, and especially when we're in crowds. Even including the after stuff. So if I'm, if, if, we're, if we're at an after event, and you know, employers understand everybody's gonna party and play, but if we're really being badly behaved, Future employers that are here are not going to hire you. Those are bad impressions. We want good impressions. Use this space to make those connections. Use this space to put your best foot forward and show them how amazing you are because you're probably amazing. Don't blow any opportunities. Don't blow any opportunities. <laughs> All right. There are about... 8 billion sites on how to write a proper resume. I counted, I know. <laughs> you need to make yours stand out. Um, we can't all... Where am I here? Okay. It's really hard to make it stand out because you only get a page and a half, two pages max. Two pages max to make this resume stand out. So what are you going to do? The first thing is you're going to have your resume proofread. Your ego is going to sit itself on the side and you are going to give your resume to someone and say, please read someone intelligent and say, please read this, mark it up and hand it back to me. I cannot tell you how many resumes I got with hideous spelling and organized in a fashion that made my eyes go blah. You, you, you need, this needs to look good and it needs to draw somebody's attention to the good things about you. Your attention to detail, no matter what, everybody wants attention to detail. So have it proofread. Custom fit your resume to the job. Leave out some of your earlier jobs if you have a longer job history. You might not want to go back more than 10 years. Um, really? Well, it, it is said that if you want to appear younger, you leave out the jobs from the 70s and 80s, maybe the 90s. Um, you focus on your career goal within your resume, so your resume might not be just a listing of your job skills. It might be text, uh, prose rather, that just talks about how incredible you are. Find your incredible, and that's what you're going to put in your resume. Skills matter, but results matter more. I took a $500,000 budget and came in $250,000 under that budget for IT expenses in 2014. Future employers want to know that you did this. You saved that company money. When you save the company money, you make the company money. Right? Put down the, the, the things that you did for your company that are very result-oriented. How you made them money, how you saved them money.
So this report from Bloomberg tells us some really interesting things. Let's see if I can get this right. This quadrant up here, actually, let's do this bottom one here. More common, less desired skills. This was some, um, it was a study done with recent, for recent grads. It's a gauge of what employers are really looking for. So as an experienced employee, you're probably going to fall into a different area than a new, than a new grad, right? So these kinds of skills over here are the things that are pretty common. Everybody's got them. I have good decision making. I can't tell you how many resumes I saw. I have, I have good decision making skills and I have a lot of initiative. Yeah. Employers don't care. They have, they have those skills already. Then you move up to the, to this quadrant here where you have less common and sort of desirable, not so much adaptability. I'm really flexible. I'll do lots of different things. Yeah, we don't care about that either. Um, you know, I set up Mac, 2000 Max in a school district. Yeah, that's great. Can you talk to people? I want to know that. This quadrant here is analytical thinking and the ability to work collaboratively. I'm a great team player. We do want to know that you're a great team player. Employers want to know that you can play with other people that you make nice. Um, and we like to know that you have critical thinking skills. Those are desirable skills. But these up here are the things that, that the young sprites just out of college don't have. They don't have leadership skills. They've done some stuff in college maybe that, that was group related and they did some leadership stuff, but they don't really have true leadership skills. They, they probably, it's harder to find creative problem solving because they haven't encountered that many problems, right? They, they just haven't. Um, communication skills. I'm not sure I would have put that up in that quadrant because lots of people can speak really well and and communi you know, communicating is not just me talking and you listening. So we are not communicating right now. We might be. It's me talking. I don't care. It's me talking and making sure that you understand. If you understand what I've said, then we have communicated. If you come back to me with something and I understand fully what you've said, then we've communicated. But if I'm just blah, 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 and you guys are just going, we are not communicating. So younger, recent grads, I keep saying younger, but really it's recent grads may or may not have that skill. Um, strategic thinking. Did I do that one already? Strategic thinking is, um, is really high. If you guys can, can see the problem three steps ahead of where it's going to be, and you can express that to your future employer, you're going to win. You're going to win. You need to prepare for an interview. Um, and I am really serious when I say you need to prepare for an interview. And I don't mean you just get up and shower and get dressed and go. Research the company that you're going to be having this interview with. You may want to research it before you submit the resume. Talk with employees, talk with customers, talk with vendors. Learn everything you can about the company you want to go to. I'm going to say this one again. You'll hear this a lot. Get a haircut. <laughs> Get a real haircut. Um, doesn't mean your hair has to be short. Get a haircut. Groom your beards. Don't be sloppy. I like your beard. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Um, know the objections of your potential employer before you walk in. Look through your resume, think of all the nasty questions they might ask, and know what they might not be happy hearing. And, and don't necessarily change your answer, you don't want to lie, but you want to have a response for what their objection is going to be. Practice talking about you the night before. Practice your interviewing skills and get a good night's sleep, all right? The interview is more like a conversation. 
it's not like you're being grilled by the police. You're not sitting in, you know, a CIA room with big a uh, light on you. You're having a conversation. Mimic back what your what your uh, interviewer is doing. So if you walk in the room, you shake hands, and you walk in the room, and the interviewer takes off his coat and he puts it on the back of his chair, you know you can relax a little bit. You're not going to slug out in the chair, but you're going to relax. You're not going to, you know, maybe you loosen your tie a little bit. Maybe you, maybe you take your sweater off. You, you, you can be a little, if he's a little more casual, you can be a little more casual. And I say he just because that's what comes out of my mouth. She, he, doesn't matter. Watch your body language. This is probably not the right way to go through an interview. Right? Because I'm saying anything you say doesn't matter. This, however, so your hand on your chin is going to show that you're thinking about this. You, you have, you're a thought, you're, it, the body language thing is so cool. Watch your body language. Be very careful about your body language. Sit straight. Don't slouch. I have a tendency to slouch in a chair. And, um, and for me, that's actually one of the things that I find most difficult to do when I'm dealing with new, cl- new customers. I really have to pay attention to how I sit. <clears throat> um, during, for the interview, you want to dress impeccably. You want to dress for what their corporate culture is and maybe a little bit more. So um, I certainly wouldn't go down to a manufacturing plant in a, in a suit, but I might go in khakis and a nice blouse, right? So I, I, wanna, I wouldn't go in jeans, because that would be unpresentable. So you want to dress impeccably. You want to forget the patchouli. All right, people? No cologne. It's distracting. Use deodorant. I shouldn't need to say it, but the fact that this was actually out there on the web means that somebody interviewed somebody who didn't wear deodorant. Wow. <laughs> yeah, or who didn't shower. So, so I know it sounds condescending, and I don't mean it to sound condescending, but that this stuff is out there means that somebody has made these mistakes. Um, when somebody asks you a question, take a breath first. Don't, you don't want a long pregnant pause, but you want a breath, and then you want to answer the question. You want to have calm so that you don't race through your, your answer. <clears throat> don't refer to your children, right? Because your children are going to give away your age, and if that's something you're trying to hedge, don't talk about your children. Do not talk about your SAT and your ACT scores. Nobody cares. Besides getting into college, nobody cares. Do talk about the gym. Even if you don't go, (laughs) there's a lie you can go, you can tell. Talk about going to the gym, talk about being healthy. Better if you do go and you do eat healthy, but Bring that up. Talk about sports if the person you're interviewing seems to be interested in that. Sell, sell, sell. If you are older, you have to let the interviewer know that you've got the energy to do anything. I know this is kind of stretching back to last year when I did the talk about aging and technology, and, and sorry if I'm spending a bunch of time on that, but we're all over 30-ish. 29. (laughs) Okay, most of us, sorry. Um, You have to, no matter who you are, you you need to let your your future employer, your, your interviewer, know that you have the energy to do anything. If you're talking about with the actual hiring manager instead of a plea below them before you go to the third and fourth and 20th interview, I don't know what companies are doing these days. Um, if you're talking with the actual hiring manager, you need to let that person know that you can do anything. You can do anything they need you to do and more. That he's not going to find anybody else who can do the job better than you. Be proud. Don't be obnoxious. 
but be proud. Make sure that person understands that you are amazing. Ask for the sale. In my business, that's the hardest thing for me to do is to say, when can we sign that contract? You need to ask for the sale, ask for the job. Let's talk about how you can bring me on board in a way that's comfortable for both of us. You've asked for the sale without being obnoxious. Offer to start working on a consulting basis for three months or six months. That, that tends to, a lot of companies are doing that. It's a very successful way to get into a company. It's, it's, it's everybody gets to feel each other out, and know what you're about, and, and really see if it's a good fit. And why wouldn't they just keep you that way then? There are, le there are legal and tax reasons why. Look up the Microsoft case dealing with that. Okay. Yeah, but nobody really cares. I mean, don't, they don't care anyway. Oh, no, 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 they care. They care. As a consultant, you are not allowed, as a consultant, you are not allowed to work exclusively for one company and maintain your consultant status. They have to then pay you benefits. There, there was a, a huge Microsoft case about it. Oh, mm. yeah, there, there was, but has that changed? Legal? Yeah, it's changed. Yeah, so what people do now, what, what folks are doing now is they're working for a consulting company, and then that consulting company is assigning, you. if you work for my consulting company, for example, hypothetically, this is not really, um, and I put you on, on site at, at pretendco.com, um, I can leave you there all the time because you are not an independent consultant. You are not a 1099, you're a W-2 working for me. You see the difference? Okay. If you are a 1099 for a company, you can't work there exclusively only. Okay. So, so no, pe that's, people can't do that. You can't and you don't have to. Can't. Yeah. Um, that was a good question, though. We actually had that discussion yesterday. Cool. I, I don't want to derail us too much, but uh, okay. so I work for the kind of scenario you were just talking about, and there was an understanding that after six months I'd be brought on to the company, Pretenco mm -hmm. um, or whatever we were talking about, mm -hmm. and uh, more than six months has elapsed, and it's just like... Are you a 1099? No, no, no. I'm so not. there you go. Yeah. That's, so there's, Everything's legal. So it, They didn't want to bring you on full time. That's what they're saying. If you are a 1099, you cannot work for a company. I don't know what the threshold is, but there is a length of time that you can work before you have tax implications. Um, and you don't want to get in trouble with the IRS. Mm -mm. No. Well, I don't. You might, but... <laughs> no. Or what? Right. Right. It's a dollar value. It's a, it's a quantity of time you work for a company, it, but it, it, it is based on 1099, not W-2 status. Okay. So... What's the worst question you could get asked in an interview? What's the one you dread the most? Or your weaknesses. No, that's <laughs> not it. I'll bet I can top that. Do you have any questions? That's not bad, but that's not it either. Why do you want to work for us? Nah, that one's easy. How about tell me about yourself? <laughs> oh, yeah, does everybody go, oh, God. I don't want to do that. Here's what you do. What you tell them, you keep it short. You give them just a taste. Keep wanting more, right? You keep it relevant to the interviewer and the job. So you might say something like, and I hate this question too, just saying it. You might say something like, I Googled myself this morning and this is what I found. <laughs> or when I was a child, I always wanted to be whatever. Or my passion is, those are good starting sentences to let you give two minutes of what you are, of who you are. And you have to practice those. You can't just come up with that on the fly. You need to know. It's like, it's like when in business, we need to have our 30-second elevator pitch, which I still don't have 20 years later. You need to have a 30-second elevator pitch about you. So practice it. Before you leave the interview, you're going to ask that interviewer how you stack up against the other people who he's interviewed. Oh, that's a hard question. That's hard, hard, hard to ask. But you've got to summon up that courage, and you've got to say to him, so how do I stack up? What are you looking for that I didn't give you yet? Ask if there are any issues 
with your candidacy, and you might want to leave that to the second or third interview. Are there any issues with my candidacy that you can see? And if there are, you're going to deal with them. When you're done with the interview, you're going to write a thank you note. Make your mama proud. You are going to write a thank you note. And best if you handwrite that note, because that shows you actually took the time and put in the effort to personally craft a letter. You put your own sweat into that letter. And you're going to put a stamp on it, and you're going to put it in the mail. Yes? On a process of the interview, sometimes you'll start with just a phone interview that no other contact, and then you'll have to interview down the line. Is this like the last or in the middle? This is, I would send a thank you note after each interview. As, yeah, I, you know, keep the communication going. The more they hear from you, the more they're going to know your name. You're not going to be a surprise to them. They're not going to be that, oh, yeah, I talked to him once, months ago. They're going to know. You should, we want to stay in front of them. Think of yourself like a business. Yeah? Any special tips for being interviewed by a committee of people? Wow, I don't have any special tips. No drinking. <laughs> Probably not a good idea. Um, I would, I, you know, that to me that feels like a lot like it would be speaking in front of a crowd. And I would probably work on my public speaking skills for that. So the Toastmasters thing, the networking, sitting with a bunch of people and telling them a story. Go to a storytelling group. Oh my God, there are storytelling groups. Um, usually they're in bars, but find a storytelling group that that'll help you speak to a committee of people you the problem with a committee is you don't know whether you want to address the person who asked you the question or everybody my gut tells me you want to address your answer to the person asking the question and then and then follow it with does anybody have a follow-up question or did that make sense to everybody you know at ref, have that reflect back does that help at all or kind of what you already figured yeah. I don't know that there's that there's any other special technique, but I would definitely if if your experience is that you're coming up on committees, I hadn't actually thought about that. I would definitely look at the public speaking part of it to to see. Let me let me get through this cuz we're really close. We're really 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 close. Um in your thank you note, you want to use influential statements. Um you want to use action words. So not necessarily what you talked about, but what you can bring to the what you can bring to the company again. All your all your amazing power skills that are in that upper right quadrant that we saw. Um, you want to deal with any candidacy. So when you ask them that question, are there any issues with my candidacy? You want to deal with those in this thank you letter. Maybe you want to issue a challenge to the interviewer and say something like, what problem are you having now? What real world problem are you having now that I can solve that would prove my value to you? Send it my way and I'll send it back with my analysis. And then do the work and when you send it back, and you send your results back, you know, put it put a drop dead date on that. I will have it back to you by X. And when you send it back, suggest a date to further discuss the solution. So you don't give them the entire solution, you give them the broad scope, basic, great taste of the solution you come up with and suggest a date to further talk about that solution. Now you've given him something for nothing. This is good, because he's got a solution to a problem that he doesn't expect expend resources on, and you potentially have made yourself another interview date. <laughs> and really important is, just like firing a client, sometimes you're allowed to get up and leave the interview before it's done. If you are knowing that it isn't right, if you really know this isn't a right fit, it's like a bad date. You know, I really don't think this is working. 
you save face, he saves face, everybody respects each other, and then the next time you interview with them for maybe a different job, you all know that you're going to be honest and, and it's going to be a, a better fit. Um, but you have to know when it's, when it's not right, and you have, it's as important to know when a job isn't right as when it is right. If, if you have things that you absolutely don't want to do, and you're interviewing for a job where those are going to be 50% of your, your tasks, that is not the right job. It's, not, it's like trying to change your spouse when you get married. It isn't going to happen. It's just going to make everybody miserable. Okay, sometimes it happens. But, but, but everybody's just going to be super miserable. So it's got to be the right fit. And if you feel that you have been discriminated in any way, gender, age, race, any other ism, you can file charges against the company. And you do that at the EEOC website. We'll, um, I have that in my, in my, on my last slide with resources. But you, that is important. It's important to know your rights as, as a person being interviewed and what is and isn't allowed. It's also important to know that just because somebody argues with us or disagrees with us doesn't mean it's a gender issue, doesn't mean it's an age issue, doesn't mean it's a race issue. Sometimes we just disagree. But if you feel you've been discriminated, really important to know that you have, you have remunera remuneration in, a, in somewhere. At the EOC, and that's what the EOC is for. All right. So now we've gotten through the job process, we've gotten through our career, and our eye is on the prize. We want to plan our retirement. Huh. Because I'm guessing not everybody wants to work forever. Of those 85 years old or older who died between 2010 and 2012, roughly one in five had no assets other than a house. We are now leaving career aside for a little bit. No assets other than a house. 30% of households today losing a family member between the ages of 50 and 64 had zero assets. Shocking, right? These are, these are scary, scary numbers. Coming up and coming generations are about half as likely to have access to a defined benefit plan at work. Now this is something that, that surprised me. I did not realize that companies are not Companies are dissolving benefit plans? Are you guys experiencing it? Yeah? Dude, that sucks. That's, that's harsh and really hard to deal with. Um, Fidelity, the money people, estimates that most investors require about eight times their ending salary to increase the chances that their savings will last during a 25-year retirement. 25-year retirement. How old are most people living to these days? I don't know the real number, but 90 for sure, right? 90 is not an uncommon. 100 is almost not uncommon anymore. But let's say 90. If we take 20 years off of that, when are we retiring? Mm. Eh, kind of sucks. 65, but really longer. And that's, that's only if we have eight times our ending salary in the bank. Yeah, we're going to work till we die. We don't want to do that. So here are the things I've learned, and I, do, I, am, I am not a money manager. I'm not a money manager. But I can tell you I'm not nearly as scared today as I was a while ago. You need to put money away. You need to stop spending on all the cool things. Sorry, Apple. <laughs> that I watch, do you really need it? I really need it. I do, but I don't need it right now. Um, we need to put money away. There are tricks to saving money, and we can trick ourselves into doing it. I have discovered a new, a new service that I use, that I've got my kids using, that I recommended somebody at our table the other night. Oh, was it you? Huh. Yeah, have you seen results from it? I haven't hooked it up yet. Okay, it's called Digit. It's super slick, and it and it's got this algorithm, and it takes money out of your um, 
out of your checking account, you hook it up to your checking account. It takes money out of your checking account periodically during the week or during the day. I don't, I don't honestly know what their algorithm is, nor do I understand it, and I don't think it's printed anywhere. And, and it puts it into a savings account, so it's, you don't even feel it. It's just money that is, just isn't there. It's just in your savings account. And pretty soon you've got money. It sends you things every day and you've got savings going, and this is good. If you've got 401k plans and you can afford to do it, put as much as you can into these things. Put, put your money away because you want to be able to not live in a cardboard box when you turn 70. That would suck. Use whatever savings plans you can. Cap them out. Talk, get an accountant. Have them tell you where you can, where you can save on, on your tax dollars. What are you doing that you could do better? I am happy to talk about this kind of thing offline because in a, in a public setting, I really, I don't want to lead anybody astray. Uh, I don't want to lead anybody astray any, ever, but, um, but I, I, because this is not my, this is what I have learned rather than what I am careered in. Um, it's a, it's a little more touchy. So, so you, you want to watch, you know, the time to start is now. If you haven't started yet, then start today. If you've already started, yay, do more. Do more. It's really, it is really hard because at 25, we're going to live forever, right? There's nothing that can hurt. We're going to live forever. Social security will take care of us. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of quick, here's one thing that came across, I only have nine minutes left, so I'm going to read you a couple of things that came across um, my desk this week. Google and Apple alum, alumni say that using this word can damage your credibility. And the word is just. I just wanted to check in on. I'm just wondering if you've decided between, if you can just give me an answer, I'm just following up. And why is this not a good word? Because it, it marginalizes us. It makes us not important. So when you send that thank you note or your follow-up letter or your interview request, do not use the word just. And I will tell you that women use this word more than men. Um, and and I, you, I can actually, I'll let you read this if anybody's interested in reading it. It's a quick read. Um, but it is, it is a very, whatever the opposite of empowering is, I don't know what that is. It's a, it's a de-empowering word. Um, so just leave it out of everything you do. Don't say it anymore. I probably said it. I could go back and listen. I probably said it like a dozen times in this session. But no, don't use the word just. Um, ARP. Yeah, so my kids loved it when I turned 50 because they got to make fun of me because I got an ARP card. Um, but ARP Magazine, who has some pretty spectacular articles on it, had this article on uh, two articles. One, the do's and don'ts of job hunting's in your 50s. Um, mistake number one, I'll job hunt, but otherwise just kick back and enjoy the break. No, no, no. If you're job hunting, it's a job. I've had my AOL account since 1993. <laughs> Anybody still have an AOL account? I do. Yeah. Okay, not since 93, but I still have one. But I never talk about it. And I don't know the password anymore. Um, I'm proud no one can find me online. I have friends who are like this. They are of job, they are of career years, and they are saying, I protect my privacy so much nobody can find me online. I'm like, really? And how do you want to get a next job? I refuse to take a job for less pay than I was making before. Sorry, guys. There's a really good chance that the next job we get, if we are out of work today, the next job we get will be less than we're making today. There's a really good chance of that. Keep your job until you get the next one. Um, I don't like bothering people. That's That would be me. I know that's hard to believe. But I don't want to bug somebody after I've interviewed with them. That's, and, I, and this is one of the things I'm overcoming in business. I don't want to call that potential client you know, 20 times in a week because I don't want to bother them. Yeah. You need to ask for the sale. You need to bother them. 
the longer my resume, the more impressed employers would be. Nah. Recruiters, headhunters will scan your resume 20 to 30 seconds tops. So one to two pages. That's it. They're looking for highlights. Uh, I'm not going to apply since I don't meet all the job requirements. That's actually, that, that's really good. If you see, again, if you see the things in the job description that you don't like, and that's most of the job description, that's not the job for you. But if there's one thing out of 20 things, go ahead and do it. You don't have to meet all the requirements, but apply for the job because you are going to sparkle when you go in there. And you're going to be so amazing and so smart that they're going to say, I'll hire you because I know you're going to learn this. Um, if I'm patient, a job perfectly suited to my experience will come along. Probably not. So it's never going to be perfect. Uh, I also have another article here. Younger boss, no problem, because most of us are going to have younger bosses coming up. It will happen. I think we have a big mix of younger and older bosses at this, because we, you know, us generation has not retired just yet and maybe never will. Um, but, but the world is changing. The world is changing. We're, we're, the likelihood that we're going to work with younger people or for a younger boss is pretty, pretty, uh, common. Uh, park your attitude, practice positivity, skip the age-centric remarks, which is like all I talked about today. Um, build relationships outside the office. There's, I, I have these. If you want to peruse them, they're here. They're on paper, because I still do paper. All right, we have four minutes. Questions? Okay, go. I'm going to try to repeat the questions, too. Do you have any input about jobs that post ridiculous requirements, like excessive degrees and things that really are not necessary for the job? Like, I know they post it, but a lot of things they don't actually mean it. Yeah, I... I, he wants to know if what do you do with a company that posts excessive requirements like 14 degrees when it's not really necessary? I would apply for it anyhow. <laughs> I mean, do you address and say I don't have this, but I think I'm still valid? Or I wouldn't. I would just send him my resume. Yeah. You know, you have to know where it's going to. If it's one of those computery things where where they're going through, they're going to siphon you out if you don't meet the requirements anyhow. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's, a, it's a comment more than a question. It goes back to your interviewing, your tips about interviewing. Uh, I've sat in a number of groups where I've hired people. I uh, usually help desk technicians or service technicians. If you're interviewing for, for a position like that that has technical ability and you get, the, you get questions asked of you that are technical and you don't know the answer, do not think it. <laughs> yeah. Period. Do not lie. No. You'll look like an idiot and you'll be welcome the job. To say, I don't, I'm not familiar with that software, I'm not familiar with that platform, I'm not, uh, let me research and get back to you, or, or answer it, do not, do not think it, I promise you. So lying is bad. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're getting here? You, you can see through bullshit a mile away. So. <laughs> all right, all right. Hi. On that note, we also do some tests for like programmers and stuff. We put them through some tests if they've made the first cut. And so you can't fake that. Right. We also, depending on the job, require some people have to do presentations. So you have to know PowerPoint or a keynote or something. And you have to make it entertaining. Okay, so so you're saying to to not lie, not lie. to have skills and, and to sparkle. And sparkle, yeah. Hey. Just a follow up on that one. I've seen a few candidates do that I actually paid off for them. But admit up front you don't know it, but then say if I had a guess or something like that, and walk through it, you know, demonstrating okay. that you get some trouble. So, so if you don't know the answer, um, talk to them about how you might discover the answer. Show them your critical thinking skills. Exactly, but admit up front, I don't know this. This is the process I go through. I don't know, but how? Here's how I might find that out. Good. Thirty-four seconds. I was going to say about the committee interview. Committee. It's, interview. Uh, I was thinking, look people in the eyes. Like, if you've got multiple people, spend time looking in the eyes of each of them. Yeah, that's hard. Depends on the size of the committee, I guess. Yeah. How many eyes can you look at in 30 seconds? 12. You've had 12. Oh, my God. Was it successful? Did you get the job? 15 seconds. Yes. Yes. Yay. Woo. 
Jen. Uh, I was just saying, you were talking about the 401k stuff and contributing. I read some very interesting data that um, if you start contributing from 25, like 22 to 32, mm -hmm. versus someone who starts at 32 and to 65, yeah. same amount of money. But you can stop. Really? The person who did it from 22 to 32 can stop. And the other person can keep going, and you have roughly the same amount of money when you're 65. That's remarkable. Mm -hmm. That is remarkable. It's got to be because of some limits that the. It's, it's right. the way that the compounding interest works. Right. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Take a cookie.